So this time we're going to um, graph a parabola, but it does have a stretch. And um, you notice that it's negative, so it's also going to be upside down. Um, they also ask us in this problem, well, they want us to graph it, but then they want us to identify the intercepts of the graph. This gives us a new idea on how we might graph it. So um, we'll show you how that works. All right. But if I'm going to graph a parabola, I really have to know where the vertex is. And right now, we're just going to use completing the square. So I'm going to show you how to do that when the coefficient, the leading coefficient, is not 1. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and um, start it out like we did before. I'm going to have, think of negative 3x squared minus 2x. And I'm going to close that off and put plus 1. Okay, the problem is that negative 3. <laughs> so we have to factor that out. And you might say, uh, negative 3 doesn't go into negative 2. It doesn't. You're right. Okay. Um, that says 2 thirds. Let's see if I can make it look a little better. If you were to distribute this in, negative 3 times x squared is negative 3x squared. Negative 3 times 2 thirds x, that's negative 2. So it works. Okay. So your negative 3 is out there in front. That's your a. That's what's going to tell you there's a stretch and that it's upside down. However, we still need to complete the square. So you look inside the parentheses. Take the 2 thirds. I'll put it in green. 2 thirds. You're going to divide it by 2, but that's the same as multiplying by 1 half, and you're going to square that. Now, when you do that, you're going to get 1 third squared, because the 2's cancel, and that's going to be 1 ninth. All right, here's what you're going to do. You're going to put plus 1 ninth inside the parentheses. That's what we want. We want that 1 ninth in there. Now, here's the tricky part. You added 1 ninth, but really you added negative 3 times 1 ninth. So you need to add out here. This is kind of going to be an oopsies, oopsies, oopsies. Sorry, sorry about that. Sorry about that little glitch in the recording. So this little part over here doesn't have anything to do with what we're adding or subtracting. So let me go back. You have negative 3 times 1 ninth. So I'll write negative 3 times 1 ninth. But you have to do the opposite of that. So I'll, I'll subtract it, OK? So I added the 1 ninth. I feel like I need to do another example. Let me just write this all out so you can see it. OK, so I have the plus 1. That comes from there. And now I had a negative 3 times 1 ninth. But I have to do the opposite of that, OK? And that will all work out because you'd have negative 3 1 ninth. And then here you'd have positive 3, uh, 3 times 1 ninth, OK? All right, so let's try to get this to look nice. Negative 3. This is going to be x plus 1 third squared. That's true. I forgot to put a plus there. And then this is going to be 1 plus 1 third. And so that's going to be 4 thirds. So I'm taking all my paper here. OK, so that's hard. That's tricky. If you multiplied that function out and did everything correct, you'd have the original equation back. OK, this says my vertex. The fractions don't make it easier, I'll tell you that. This makes the vertex at negative 1 third comma 4 thirds. Now, because I have such a small piece of graph paper, what I'm going to do, and I don't usually do this, I'm going to count by one-thirds. So I'm going to say there's one. If you do this on your paper or on a test, one, two, three, 
there's two. You have to mark it. You have to label it. There's negative one, negative two. And I'm going to be consistent. Here's one, and here's two, and here's negative one, and negative two. Okay, that'll make it a little bit easier to graph. We know where the vertex is. Negative one third, four thirds. So it's going to be right there. Uh, negative one third, four thirds. Now, that's the vertex, and we have to know that to graph it. We know it's upside down. But they also, remember I talked about this, they also said identify the intercepts of the graph. Okay, we're going to go back to the equation then that they gave us, and we're going to say f of x equals negative 3x squared minus 2x plus 1. That was the original, right? I'm going to look at my paper, make sure I got the original right. Yeah, okay. To find the y-intercept, you just plug in 0 for x. So plug in 0, input of 0, that's going to be 0, that's going to be 0. So you're going to get the y-intercept at 0, 1. Okay, that'll be easy enough to graph. So we'll graph that. 0, 1. It's going to be right there. Because a parabola is symmetric, then we know there's a point on the other side right there. The axis of symmetry is going right through the vertex. I don't know if you can see my little dotted line there, but think of it, that's where you fold the paper to get the points on the left to match up with the points on the right. So once you get a point on one side of the axis of symmetry, you know the other one on the other side. That's the great thing about the axis of symmetry. It saves a little bit of work. Okay, now that tells us the y-intercept. But what about the x-intercepts? If I take the original function, negative 3x squared minus 2x plus 1, and set it to 0, this will tell me the x-intercepts. Okay? Now, that's a quadratic function. I know how to solve those. First, I'm going to multiply everything by negative 1 because I don't like the negative 3, so. And this factors, so it's going to be 3x and x. And I'm going to have a 1 and a negative 1. It just makes a difference which one's negative. So it's going to be a positive here and a negative here. Now you can check that with FOIL. should all work. Um, you, if you don't like factoring, you could use the quadratic function. Um, or you might have another way to factor other than trial and error, which is what I kind of did. Okay. So what do I get for x values? I get 1 third, that's that one, and negative 1. So I have x intercepts at 1 third comma 0 and um, 1 comma 0. So let me go back. Let's make sure it looks right. So I have 1 third 0. Wait a minute, wait a minute. That was supposed to be a negative 1. Sorry about that. You're probably wondering, why didn't she make that a negative 1? I'll tell you why I made that mistake. Well, I made it because I make mistakes. But here's how I knew it was a mistake. <laughs> when I put my 1 third 0 in, I knew that was going to be like right there, 1 third 0. I have to have one on the other side. Remember, we just about talked about that symmetry, right? So it's got to be over here on the other side. Now, is that symmetric about the axis of symmetry? It is. And so I get a nice little graph here. Did I identify the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts? Yep, right there. Okay. That one was a tricky one, mostly because of the fractions, okay? Um, but I'll try to come up with another example later.